What's up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. These are my DraftKings MMA picks for UFC 264. We have Conor McGregor going against Dustin Poirier. The trilogy, a fight I'm really looking forward to, and a card as a whole that I'm really looking forward to as well. I think there's some great fights on here. I think it's a great card from a DFS standpoint as well. And as always, it's another opportunity to make money. So just want to point out that it is the beginning of the month. So now is a great time to sign up on the Patreon. Um, if you are here, you're probably looking forward to the, the MMA DFS tier. Uh, with that, you have access to my MMA model. Um, this does include the advanced stat page, courtesy of Uncle Wheezy. Also, he provides a matchup template as well. You got the MMA optimizer that I just added in a couple months ago. People seem to really like that. Provides a lot of value to the $10 a month there. Uh, the premium projections, access to Discord, the GBP line percentages, the targets and rankings, and also the DFS article as well. So tons of info there. If you are into the betting as well, there's a $10 betting. And then, of course, there is the DFS betting, which is 20 bucks as well. So I uh, set a record of patrons last month. I'm going to see if we can get right back up there this month. And I really do appreciate all the support week in and week out from all you guys there. So it is a pay-per-view. So, of course, we're going to be doing the DFS contest. Uh, to enter that, first, leave a like on the video. Second, subscribe if you have not yet. And then third, comment down your DraftKings username. I can get up to 200 people in there. $25 to first place, not much, just something to show thanks for all the support you guys do bring to the channel, uh, so make sure you guys do comment your DraftKings names there, and uh, yeah, we're going to get into the video, before we do so, if you guys can leave a like, also subscribe if you have not yet, that'd be much, much appreciated as always, so we'll start with, as always, the fight doesn't go to decision lines, and the, the four most likely to end inside the distance are going to be O'Malley, and Montino, minus 475, a fight doesn't go to decision. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a, a fight where I'd be shocked if O'Malley did not finish this guy, and I'd be shocked if it like went into like the second or third round. Um, you know, Montino, he's not terrible. He's not horrible. It's just, you know, not much experience. Um, he fights with his hands down. He comes forward. He's, he's a tough guy, but he's just so hittable, and you do not want to be hittable against Sean O'Malley. I do think Sean O'Malley gets him out of there. He gets him out of there early. Sean O'Malley is going to be the most popular fighter on the entire slate, and for a for a very good reason, probably. I mean, this, this is just set up for him to get another knockout or a knockoff, uh, knockout win or walk off knockout win um, at nine thousand five hundred. Yes, he's the most expensive, but again, like I said, for a very good reason, I'm going to have a ton of O'Malley. Um, as far as Moutinho, probably not going to get there all that much, if any at all. McGregor Poirier. Minus 325, fight doesn't go to decision. I agree with those odds. I do think this ends inside the distance one way or another, whether it is Connor early or Dustin late. I'm going to be 100% exposed to this fight, especially at those price tags. Uh, I just don't see this fight not being on the optimal lineup. So 100% exposure, probably going 50-50, honestly, right down the middle. Uh, but I do like both fighters there from a DFS perspective. Uh, Alan Amadovsky going against Yazong Hu. Um, weird fight, weird fight, interesting fight. Uh, Amadovsky, 9,000. Hugh is 7,200. We see the odds closing up. I wouldn't be shocked if this line uh, by fight time went to a pick or even flipped. So there's going to be a ton of line value on the Yuzong Hu side. I actually like him to win as well. So I'm going to be pretty heavy on that $7,200 price tag. But at the same time, Alan Amadovsky is 9,000. I don't see many people playing him at all. I think this fight's very important to target because um, neither guy has ever won by decision. Amadovsky, 100% finish rate all by knockout. Uh, Hugh has a 100% finish rate, 66% by knockout, and 33% by submission. So I do think this fight has a good chance of ending inside the distance. It is the first fight of the night, so it is going to be lower owned. And, you know, the majority of people playing probably don't know who the heck Alan Amadovsky or Yazong Hu are. So I feel like this fight as a whole is going to go very under owned. I feel like it has a, has a solid shot to find the optimal lineup. So I'm going to be pretty heavy on it. First fight of the night, I know it's an ugly fight, but ugly fights tend to score decent. More often than not. And then Michelle Pereira going against Nico Price. Another fight where I'm going to be very heavy on. These four fights are, are four fights that I really want to target this week. And you always want to target a Nico Price fight. No matter who's fighting. It's, he's a killer be killed fighter. He has been to decision one time in his entire career. The one time being against Donald Cerrone in his last fight. So there might be a little bit of recency bias. But typically this guy is either winning inside the distance or losing inside the distance. Nico Price, 92% finish rate, has lost all four of his losses by finish. Three knockout losses, one submission loss as well. I think there's a very good chance that somebody gets finished here. Michelle Pereira, 8,900. I, I like it quite a bit. Nico Price is very hittable. Um, he has no regards for any striking defense whatsoever. On the flip side, Nico Price can knock out anybody at any time, anywhere. Um, so you got to have both sides here. So I do like both sides. 
Uh, going to be pretty pretty heavy on this fight. But yeah, Nico Price, 7,300 is not a, not a terrible dog there. All right, so we'll get to the core place here. Sean O'Malley, 9,500. You've got to have a lot of them. Um, if, 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 he, if he wins and he wins inside the distance and you don't have a lot of them this week, you're going to be in big trouble because he's going to be so high owned. Uh, I'm not going to go like 100% owned on him or anything like that, but I'm going to have a, a decent amount. He should rack up knockdowns. He should get a first-round knockout, second-round knockout. Um, I'd be really shocked if it did get later into the fight, honestly. Just a big skill gap between the two. Martino, he's not horrible. It's just big skill gap. He's very hittable, you know, hands down low. He has been finishing all four of his losses, two by knockout, two by sub. Um, they're setting this fight up for O'Malley to get a, a knockout win here. So give me O'Malley as a core play, 9,500, um, must own in cash. And for tournaments, I'm going to be very highly exposed. Like like I said, not 100%, but definitely up there for sure. All right, Max Griffin, 8,700, somebody I do like quite a bit. I like him to beat Condit here. Um, the big thing here is, and especially with that new scoring system, we see uh, you know the wrestler grapplers be able to score very well, and that's what Max Griffin's going to do in this fight, more than likely. I mean, you got to think, Carlos Condit has a 39% takedown defense. Um, anybody in, in Carlos Condit's entire career, if you want to take him down, you are successful in doing so. And I do think Max Griffin does go to his takedowns here. Griffin does average about two takedowns for 15 minutes, 51% accuracy. I think he can rack up takedowns here, a ton of them, a lot of control time as well. And uh, I do think it scores pretty decent. I don't know if he finishes Condit. Condit's very hard to finish. He's only been knocked out once in 45 fights. Has been submitted six times in his career. Don't see Max Griffin in his submission. So I see Max Griffin winning by decision, racking up strikes, racking up control time, racking up takedowns, and probably scoring pretty decently. So do like Max Griffin. At 8,700 there. Uh, Conor McGregor, 8,100. Yeah, I like Conor here. Um, but at the same time, I like I like Justin as well. I'm going to be 50-50 on this fight. I think both fighters have, you know, passed the victory. If Conor does win, it's going to be in the first or second round. If Dustin wins, he's probably going to weather the storm, win, in, you know, rounds three, four, and five. But either way, I see the winner of this fight scoring very, very well. Um, So, yeah, probably just going to, you know, split it right down the middle. Conor wins. He's going to get a knockout, and he's going to score really good. If uh, Dustin wins, he's probably going to get a knockout, maybe a submission later in the fight. He's probably going to score very good. I see there being a lot of output in this fight as well. So, yeah, I just don't see how this fight does not end up on the optimal lineup, especially at the price tags of 8,100. You know, both guys, both Conor and both Dustin, are going to be very high owned and for a very good reason. But, yeah, I'm just probably going to go 50-50 here. Um, you know, and the winner is more than likely going to get on the optimal lineup. I'd be really shocked if this fight um, did not find the optimal lineup here. And then Steven Thompson, 8,500. Yeah, he's been looking really good lately. He's been looking really good. He's really sitting down on his punches more. It looks like he's throwing harder. I think he's a good chance to knock out Gilbert Burns here, who, um, you know, has been knocked out twice. I don't think Burns has the best cardio in the world. I don't think Burns has the best chin in the world either. And, you know, Thompson's going to get a lot of opportunities to get a finish here. So, you know, Burns is going to be very dangerous in that first round. But if he does not get that first round finish, if he does not get takedowns, I do think Burns is going to slow down. I do think Thompson's going to be able to pick him apart. And if you go back and watch that Luke fight, like Luke was eating some serious shots from Thompson. And, you know, Luke is probably the only person that could eat those same shots. I don't think Burns is going to be able to take those same shots there. Um, you know, Thompson was almost, you know, the first person to finish Luke. Like he had Luke hurt like three or four times in that fight. Um, but yeah, I think Thompson has a good chance to find a finish here. At least like rack up a ton of output. Um, he throws a ton of significant strikes per minute. He lands 4.24 per minute. Um, I think it's a good matchup for him. So 8,500 if he does not finish Burns. Um, I don't know if he scores all that well, but even then, like he probably racks up a ton of output. Um, but I, I do think he can uh, get a finish here, at least like a, a later in the fight finish. So like a third round finish if Burns does slow down. But I do like Thompson. I do like Thompson to win. 8500 is not a terrible price tag at all. Getting into our GBP plays here, our tournament plays. We have Dustin Poirier, 8100 Like I said, 50-50. I think Dustin has a, a, a great chance to win this fight if he does survive that first round, round and a half, two rounds. After that, I just don't think Connor has the gas to keep going, and I think Dustin's going to slowly start taking over and eventually find a finish. Um, kind of like last fight, I do think it goes a little bit further if Connor does not get that knockout. Um, but yeah, I, I do like Poirier here. He has you know takedown upside, grappling upside, control time upside. Um, I, I just don't see him not finding the optimal lineup if he does not. If he, if he beats Conor McGregor here, I do not see him not being on the optimal lineup. It's going to score well, especially these price tags. If they were, you know, priced higher, you could argue, I, I guess. But even then, like, 8,100, um, if they find the optimal lineup, I see the winner scoring over 100 easily. 
um, especially in a fight like this. So give me give me Dustin Poirier. Like I said, splitting it 50-50. Um, can't really see myself doing it any other way. I think 50-50 is probably the way to go because you have Connor early, Dustin late, either way. Whoever wins is going to be on the optimal lineup. As far as cash goes, that's where it gets very interesting. Don't know what I'm doing there yet. Um, you could either, you know, play them both. You know, either pick one or the other, which is going to be very hard to do in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I, know, I just, I know for tournaments, I'm going 100% own on this fight. I think it's uh, pretty smart to do so. All right, Driscus Duplessis going against um, Trevin Giles here. He is 8,200, and yeah, he's very dangerous. Uh, I think something to note, and this is why I really do want to target this fight, is 100% finish rate for Driscus. 100%. 40% by knockout, 60% by submission. Trevin Giles has been finished in both of his losses, two by submission. And Driscus has been finished in both of his losses, both by submission as well. So I think this fight's going to finish. Uh, Driscus has never seen the scorecards in 17 fights. I don't see that changing here. And, you know, he's, he's dangerous. I, I don't think he's the better fighter in this fight, but he's he hits very hard. He's very opportunistic with his submissions. So I wouldn't be shocked if he got a sub or a knockout. No, I would not. I just think somebody's getting finished in this fight, especially these price tags of 8,200, 8,000. Um, again, I think there's a very good chance that this fight finds the optimal lineup. Not going to go like 100% owned on it like I am for Dustin Poirier, but I'm going to be very highly exposed to both sides here. I think Driscus and Giles uh, are both very good plays because this fight more often than not is probably going to finish here. So give me Driscus, 8,200. I think it's a pretty solid play there. Uh, Tai Tuivasa, 8,400. Um, yeah, interesting fight. I'm actually picking Tyvasa to lose this fight, but Tyvasa is a finisher, 92% finish rate. Already has been knocked out before. It was a knockout in his last fight against Tybura. Um, if Tyvasa, if Tai Tuivasa is able to close the distance, um, you know, get Hardy against the cage, I think he's a very good chance of, you know, landing something, knocking out Hardy. It's just Hardy's very hard, you know, to close the distance against. Um, Hardy's very good at staying on the outside and circling, um, and keeping it at range. So if Taito Ivasa is able to implement his game plan of getting on the inside, you know, working those leg kicks as well, I think Taito Ivasa can finish him. And honestly, if there's a finish in this fight, I do lean, um, it being towards the Taito Ivasa side as Taito Ivasa has an insane chin on him. Um, he has been knocked out before by JDS in a, in a kind of a weird stoppage where, JDS was in mount, raining down punches, and Taito Ivasa was still fighting back, and the ref just stopped it there, but, um, yeah, Taito Ivasa, he's tough, he's durable, he's a finisher, it's a heavyweight fight, at these price tags, I'm willing to take some shots on both here, so Taito Ivasa, 8,400, I think he's a solid play there, Aliyah Taporia, 9,100, yeah, interesting play here, uh, you know, Ryan Hall is a very, you know, tricky puzzle to solve, I mean, you take a look at some of his stats here, he does average 2.32, Significant strikes landed with only a absorbing 0.96, and he has a 75% strike in defense. So, you know, Ryan Hall is very good on staying at staying on the outside. I think he's a very underrated striker. Um, so I don't know how well this fight's going to score. Could Tapora take down Ryan Hall? Absolutely. It's just, does he want to take down Ryan Hall? Does he want to mess around on the ground with Ryan Hall? And yes, Tapori is a black belt, but you know, this is going to be the best grappler that Tapori has ever faced by a mile. So um, I like Taporia. Uh, maybe he does get a knockout. Uh, Ryan Hall has never been knocked out. Taporia only has two knockouts on his record. Um, and I do think Taporia might go a little bit over-owned here. So I don't know how high I'm on Taporia in this matchup. In general, I'm like really high on this guy. It's just kind of one of those tricky matchups where I'm not sure what's going to happen. Ryan Hall is, a, a like I said, a very tricky puzzle to solve. We're going to see him doing a bunch of Minari rolls, flopping to his back, all that. And is it going to score a lot on DK? I don't know. I don't know. So I'd be kind of careful with this fight. But maybe, hey, maybe, maybe Taporia does knock him out, close the distance. It's just, again, Ryan Hall has never been knocked out. And Taporia only has two knockouts on his record. So um, don't hate him. But I'd much rather go up and get O'Malley for 400 more dollars. So we'll see what happens there. All right. Michelle Pereira, 8,900, talked about a little bit of fight you're going to want to target because it is a Nico Price fight. Nico Price, killer be killed fighter. No regards to any striking defense at all. He rushes in with his hands down. 49% striking defense, which is one of the worst on the entire slate. Um, absorbs 5.83 significant strikes per minute, which is the worst on the slate. <laughs> so, you know, Nico Price is very hittable. And Michelle Pereira, he can crack. He can absolutely hit very hard. Um, Pereira, a finisher himself. He, uh, you know, lots of knockouts on his record. Lots of submissions on his record as well. Um, you know, Nico does put his, you know, neck in, in bad places at times. We've seen it in the Luke fight where Luke was not able to finish a choke. But 
Um, he did put himself in some really bad spots there, and Price has been submitted before. So, yeah, I could see a, a knockout for Pereira, maybe even submission as well. But, yeah, um, a fight you're going to want to target. You know, Nika Price, you can never count this guy out, ever. It's just, man, he's so hittable, and you don't really want to be hittable against a guy like Michelle Pereira. So, yeah, I like Pereira, 8,900. One of my favorite plays on the slate because, again, it's a Nico Price fight. And Nico Price fights, they score very, very well. It's going to be, um, in my opinion, the best fight of the card here. Uh, Michelle Pereira versus Price. I think it's a very good fight. And I honestly can't wait for it. And I'm going to have a ton of it in DFS. Getting to the live dogs. Nico Price just talked about him. Um, yeah, he's a finisher. He is uh, absolutely a finisher. 92% finish rate. I think he has maybe one decision win. Um, Pereira has been knocked out once by Dusko Todorovic. Other than that, his chin has held up, but he has honestly not fought, you know, somebody as dangerous as Nico Price. You know, Nico Price, like I said, he can finish fights from anywhere off his back, you know, on top, you know, at range, anywhere. He's so dangerous. He hits so hard. And, you know, in that Chaos Williams fight um, against um, Pereira, you know, Chaos Williams, when he did, you know, close distance, um, you know, kind of rushed in close distance. He had a lot of success. He was hitting Pereira clean at times. And, you know, Chaos Williams only did, you know, a couple flurries here and there. And, you know, they worked. That's what Nico Price is going to be doing the whole time. So I would not be shocked at all if Nico Price was, you know, running in there like a madman. Um, you know, he's going to definitely take some shots to give some shots. But I wouldn't be shocked if Nico Price was able to, you know, make Pereira uncomfortable, close the distance and knock him out. Um, so yeah, I mean, Nico Price, 7,300, I think is going to be one of the more popular dogs on the slate and for a very good reason, because you know, no matter who he's facing, like this guy is, is so dangerous, um, that he can put anybody out at any time. So yeah, I like Price as a dog, 7,300, good price tag there, but the fight as a whole, I'm going to have a, a ton of, I think it does score very well. Gilbert Burns, 7,700. Yeah, I don't really love the matchup for him, but it's hard to deny how dangerous Gilbert Burns is, you know, has a lot of power. Um, if he gets his fight on the mat, going to have a, a great opportunity to find a submission as well. Thompson has been knocked out before by Anthony Pettis. So that's what I'm kind of worried about from the Thompson side is, hey, if uh, Burns does clip Thompson, um, maybe he puts him out, maybe he subs him there. And you know, Thompson has been dropped not once, not twice, not three times. I think like four or five times in the UFC, Thompson has been dropped here. So it's definitely possible. And Burns is definitely dangerous, especially early. And he definitely has a lot of ways to win as well. So I think Burns is a solid dog here. Although I am high on Thompson, it's uh, hard to you know not recognize the upside for Gilbert Burns, especially from a DFS standpoint. Because maybe he does get Thompson down. I'm leaning towards it doesn't happen. Maybe he does. And if he does, I think he will have a lot of success. And then, of course, there is an um, opportunity to hurt Thompson on the feet as well. Thompson has been hurt you know, quite a bit. I think he's a very tough guy, Thompson. I think he's a very good chin, but, you know, Burns is very dangerous. So I do like Burns as a, as a dog play here. Um, 7700 not a terrible price tag, but if he does win, it's probably inside the distance. I would be shocked if Burns uh, won a decision or something like that. Greg Hardy, 7800 i um, kind of iffy on this one because I do think that if Hardy does win, I think there's going to be a lot of output. Don't think there's going to be much control time, and I'm not sure if there's going to be a knockout as well, but at, at the end of the day, it is heavyweight. Greg Hardy has finished the majority of his wins. I think he has one official decision win. I remember he had a decision win that got um, taken away from him. I think it was uh, the inhaler situation there against Ben Sassoli. But, you know, Hardy, he's a finisher, 86% finish rate. Taito Vasa has been finished in two of his three losses. It is heavyweight fight. Um, I think Hardy could finish him. I'm leaning towards more of like a Hardy decision. And at that point, maybe it scores well, maybe it doesn't. But he does throw a ton of output, lands over five you know, just about five significant strikes per minute. Um, Taitui Vasa has a very poor striking defense of 50%, uh, one of the worst on the slate there. So, yeah, I think Hardy can have some success. Maybe he does knock out Tui Vasa, 7,800. Don't think it's a terrible play there as a dog. And Trevin Giles going against Triscus Duplessis. Um, yeah, Duplessis has been finished in both of his losses, once by knockout, once by sub. I think someone's getting finished here. I do think Trevin Giles is the better fighter. Um, I think he's going to have an advantage. And, you know, anywhere the fight goes, it's just Duplessis is very, very dangerous. Giles, 8,000. I like it as a dog play here. Um, I think if he does win, it's, it's more often than not either a, a knockout or a submission. So, yeah, give me Giles as a dog. But the fight as a whole is something I really do like. Because, again, neither guy is lost by decision. And I really don't see that changing here in this fight. Getting into our pump plays here. Uh, he Zong Hu. Um, interesting play here. Going against Alan Amadovsky. A fight that I, I uh, you know, weirdly really like here because both guys 100% finish rate. Both guys have been finished in half their losses. Uh, Hugh has been submitted once 
And Madovsky has been knocked out once by John Phillips. I think there's a good chance there's a finish here. And you, you take a look at the line, and who is only plus 110, where you have a Madovsky minus 130. So, you know, serious line value. I do think Hugh's going to be somewhat popular for that, that reason. But, you know, I do like him to win this fight. I think he's going to be the much bigger fighter. He's coming down from heavyweight and light heavyweight. Um, he's very young, 26 years old, taking a three-year layoff. We have not seen him since he was like 23 years old, training at a very good camp in Tiger Muay Thai. Um, if he does not get knocked out, you know, I think there's a very good chance that he he wins. I think he has more opportunities to win. I think he can hold Amadovsky against the cage, racking up DK points there. I think he can get takedowns racking up DK points there, and maybe even find a finish himself. So um, Amadovsky, he's very dangerous, 100% finish rate. Hugh it has never been knocked out, but again, he's only had five fights. Um, but yeah, I mean, 7,200, um, I think it's a good good pump play here. But a fight that I do like as a whole, a fight that I do think scores very well, um, and it's the first fight of the night, so I do think it's going to be low-owned as well. So yeah, give me Hugh here as a pump play, you know, ugly, ugly fight. But I, I do like targeting these ugly fights as they typically score well. And they typically don't have much ownership on them. And then fades Zagas Zumagulov at 9,300. Just no point in playing this guy. I mean, he's not a finisher. I think he's like a yeah, like a 54% finish rate. Jerome Rivera has been finishing four of his five losses. It's just um, Zumagulov is going to be at a huge height and a huge reach disadvantage. Uh, not much pop on his punches. He's not going to submit Jerome Rivera as well. I see Zumagulov more than oft, more often than not winning a decision here. And at that point, especially at 9,300, when you, when you can get O'Malley, you can get Alan Emadovsky, you can even get Elliot Taporia. Uh, just don't really see any reason at all to play Zaga Sumagulov this week. All right, guys, that's about it. Just want to remind you guys, it's always a great time to become a member of the Patreon and receive full access to my model. Um, you got the advanced stats there, courtesy of Uncle Wheezy. Lots of great info in there. Um, any stat you can never ask for all in that model. Premium projections, uh, lineup optimizer. The optimizer is already set up, ready to go. Projections are already put in there. Um, you can build up to 150 lineups in there. Uh, you got the GPP lineup percentages, uh, the DraftKings article, and also access to Discord. Lots of great stuff going on. $10 a month, very cheap, $2.50 per week. Uh, try to make it as cheap as possible and provide the best content possible as well. So sign up for that. The link will be in the description below. Um, people that already signed up really do appreciate that. And yeah, guys, that's about it. Uh, comment down your DraftKings usernames. Uh, leave a like on your way out. That'd be much, much appreciated. Also, subscribe if you have not yet. Uh, check out my live stream, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time on Friday. Uh, and then one hour prior to the prelims on Saturday. So that's what I have going on. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can. DFS underscore numbers. Instagram is DFS by the numbers. My DMs are always open for any questions. So that's about it, guys. And good luck. Great card. UFC 264. And let's make some money.